Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create Oracle ADF contextual events. Our example is going to be very simple. Basically, we're going to have two regions on a page. The left-hand region is going to contain uh, some components where we can make modifications and save. And then the right-hand side is going to react to it. It's going to be uh, updating according to the changes that we made on the left-hand side. So the reason why we use contextual events is because if you have one event that occurs, whether it's an attribute change or a range change, that, um, you might want to have several components that react to it. Okay, so this is used quite often with parent child region communication. Of course, you can pass input parameters to regions as well, but if you have lots of things that need to update, this might make more sense. So let me show you what we have here so far. We have three different page flows. We have our main bootstrap, unbounded one. We have our emp form, and we have our emp name, which will just show the response. Okay, so we have a couple page fragments, one for the form, one for the emp name. Let's take a look at our form real quickly. You'll see here that we'll be able to navigate and we can also make changes along the way. And you'll see that for our emp name, right now we don't really have anything on here. Let's see what we can place in here though. We've got a panel group layout and I'm going to grab an output text, grab a couple of these and place them on here. And of course later you can put a spacer in here, but we want to have programmatic access to the actual widgets, to the components themselves. And the way we do that is through the bindings. So if you go to the property inspector under binding, you can create a new managed bean. Okay, so I'm going to call this name bean. Okay, let's make this backing bean scope, generate the class if it doesn't exist. Now let's have a first name field. And let's do the same thing for this other widget right here. Let's use the same bean, except this time it will be L name field. So that's programmatic access to the rich component itself. Now as far as the actual value that's going in there, we want to go to the value right up here and create a managed bean value. Let's actually go to the bean that was created and in here we're going to say private string, f name and l name and then generate the getters and setters. Boom. Now we're done. Okay, so now we can go back here click on this guy for the value. We're going to go to our bean. It was backing bean scope. Here's my name bean. And here is our F name. I'm just going to copy this, go to this other one right here, paste it, and then tweak it. Change that to L name. So now we have programmatic access to the actual value. Now, in order to create the producer, you need to go through a couple steps. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's take a look at our M form right here. For right now, let's just have our last name change uh, kick off an event. Okay, so we want last name to kick off an event. I'm going to scroll down in the property inspector to our published events and we're going to hit a plus and we're going to call this last name change event. Don't worry about modifying anything else. Now the event when it gets kicked off it's going to send off a payload with some pertinent information. What happened? Well if you look at the bindings then go to contextual events you'll see that there's our name change event. Okay. Now we need a consumer, which is typically going to be a Java class that contains a method. The method is going to take one argument, which is a DC binding container value change event object. Yes, I know it's a long name. I went ahead and created some of the code for us uh, before, just so we can step through the code. You can call your class anything you want. It doesn't have to implement any interface or extend 
any class, uh, but here I, I called my uh, method handle event. Here is my DC binding container value change event. Okay, I need to get a handle on the faces context object. From there, I can get a handle on the expression language context as well as the application. Then I have my application get expression factory, which returns an expression factory object. Whew, all those steps just to do this. Value expression. We're creating a value expression. Here is our backing bean scope dot name bean. That's how we use expression language to access the bean. And so now we can take this value expression and down here when we call get value, passing in the EL context, it returns an instance of our bean. Why do we want our bean? Well, we want to grab programmatic access to the value so we can make a modification. Now the payload got passed in through here. So when we get the new value, that's just the new value that we changed on our form page. We downcast that to a string. Then what is our next step? Well, we can take our name bean and we can set our last name. The last name is going to be set to whatever that new value was. But we're not quite finished. We need to implement partial page rendering so it will actually update. In order to do programmatic PPR, you need to grab the ADF faces context. And there's a static method called get current instance. We'll just call this ADF CTX. And then from here, we can say add partial target, passing in our user interface component, which is our beans get L name field. This is the rich output text. There we have it. Our next step is that we want to take our Java code and create a data control from it. So just right click on here and say create data control. It's generating some necessary XML for us. Now let's go to the page definition for our emp name right here. Here's our bindings and executables. And now we want to create a binding for the method that we just created. So here under bindings, right click, insert inside bindings, go to generic bindings, and then method action. Here's my event consumer. Okay, here's the operation, handle event. Here's the parameter, here's the payload right here. And you can leave everything else the same. Okay, now let's go to our main page and see what it looks like. You'll see that these are empty right now. What we need to do is drag regions on here. So here are my page flows. Here's the emp form, create a region. And here's the emp name. We'll create a region there too. Let's now go to our main page. If you right click and go to the page definition, we can right click on this root node in the structure window and say, edit event map and you'll see that we have this plus. Okay, so you want to make sure that you edit the event map of the parent that contains the child regions. So the producer, let's see what we have here. Here's our um, form page last name, good. The event name is the last name change event and the consumer is the handle event. Okay, the reason why this showed up is because we created a binding for it. Now we need to provide the consumer parameter and the name is the actual name of the argument of our handler method. So remember we just called it payload. And for the param value we can use this and we can actually drill down until we see payload data. Hey, here's payload. Hit OK. And there we have it. We've created our contextual event. 
Now there's one more thing that I'd like to do and that's just review our code, make sure we have everything in here. Uh, the number one thing that people make a mistake on is accidentally uh, fat fingering something here like I just did. This should be backing bean scope. Okay, there's one more quick thing I want to do and that's go into this JSF page here. We're just going to do a little rearranging, move this from the center facet to the top facet and then we're also going to select the output text and change the style a little bit. Now in the real world you'd want to use skinning to change the style but I'm just doing this to show you the size. We'll make that a little bit larger. Now we'll save it and we can go ahead and run our main page. And here's our page. Let's change the last name of Johnson to be Jones. Hit tab and you'll see that that's the, that automatically updated. Let's set it back to Johnson and there we go. I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit us at our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.